So here's the ammo box. First thing I'm going to do is open it up. Get some of these wires out of the way a little bit. Like that. Pull that out of there. Okay, so I am going to uh, install a four gang uh, negative terminal block. And this is made by C Choice. As you can see, it's got one, two, three, four on top. It's got four on the bottom. So it's really, I don't know, kind of eight gang. It's got holes in here so you can. Uh, you know, mount it to something, but normally what I do on these is I'll make a jumper cable, you know, with a, with a, a crimp on connector from here to here, so I can attach uh, all my negative leads to this, and then a main lead going to the battery. And uh, there's probably other ways you could do this, but, um, you know, I use these on all my um, ammo cans. Uh, this is a brass part. It's rated at 30 amps. Okay, so everything has a rating. You know, some people might think, well, you know, you can use a bolt and a nut and put all your negative leads on that, but uh, I don't know. I wouldn't do something like that, especially when you're dealing with this. Plus, you know, if you have your ammo can and it looks really nice and you got a nice design and you did a great job on it, the last thing you want to do is open it up and, you know, you just got a rat's nest of wiring in there. So you just want it to make it look good. Um, I buy these parts over time. I don't buy everything all in one shot, you know, and end up spending all this money. So I just get, you know, wait a week or two, buy another part, you know, when I have the money, or I'll look at something that looks good, and I'll buy the part, and so forth, and, you know, just keep going on that way. You know, that way, over time, you can actually get a uh, really nice project together, and uh, you know, spread the cost over time. So this is going to go inside here, right like this. And I am going to use um, these 8 30 seconds uh, machine screws. I'm going to use uh, nylon lock nuts, and uh, they're also 8 30 second, by the way. And what else am I going to use? Up, 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 up. Let me think here. Oh, uh, rather than cutting the screws, I might end up using some of these uh, beveled washers on the outside just to give me a little bit more space and also give it a nice finished look. But these are quarter inch uh, rubber beveled washers. And as soon as I mark this, I'm going to get this where I want it, I'm going to mark it with a pencil. Uh, I will use this drill bit right here, which is like maybe 5 30 seconds. And I'm going to install that on a flexible shaft. So once I get it in there like that, I can it'll kind of bend and I can get a, uh, a straight through. Instead of drilling it at an angle, I can drill it, you know, uh, perpendicular uh, to that plane. Okay. So this will allow me to bend it any way I want, but keep it straight on there so I can drill straight through and my my uh, my holes won't be at an angle angle down. Okay, and that's what I'm going to do. Okay, I need to show you something now. Uh, I ran one of the screws through and put this thing back on like that and drilled the other hole. Okay, uh, we ended up being a half inch below this rim, half inch from the top here to the bottom here top of that thing okay that's a half inch now there's a little bit of a trick getting these screws on take a look at the other side we'll close up the box real quick screws are going to come in right here okay you see that and they're actually slightly under the slip and what we're going to do is we're going to take our 8 30 seconds 3 quarter inch screws right there how we're going to pop this on. We're going to angle it in. Like this. Put it in like this. And gently force it in there. Angle it down a little bit right here so you clear that lip. Keep turning it. It'll give. And there you go. Flip it over, and it looks like that. I'll straighten out. There we go. 
Then we'll take our negative terminal block. I don't know if you can see that. There you go. Probably use a couple of these. I don't know if these will look good or not, but let's see. Pop one in here like that. Pop one in here like that. And then we'll install our lock nuts. We'll tighten those down in a minute. Our negative terminal block in there. I'll try to turn that around a little bit. That's what it looks like. Actually, it looks pretty cool. Once you get it in there, it looks pretty cool. And of course, this will close properly. There you go. I'm not worried about the battery falling out or anything. This is completely upside down now. You can see the screws in there. But other than that, you can't see the screws. That's it. So, what ended up happening was that this screw ended up being a little bit higher. Uh, this screw ended up being lower, so I had to drill down a little bit to even these out. And I added these brass washers, and you can see they're still you know, fairly hidden underneath uh, that lip. But I would say, in retrospect, go down at least five eighths of an inch on both sides. Five eighths of an inch uh, from the top lip here of the uh, negative ground block to the top of the uh, box. So I think if you do that, you should be in pretty good shape. The other thing I would suggest if you don't have a right angle uh, drill, uh, use one of these bits like this as a hand drill and drill it through uh, this way, uh, just by hand. Um, I think overall uh, you're probably going to be a little bit more precise, but um, this is a good measurement. Five eighths of an inch uh, below the top is a good measurement, and you can see that that looks pretty good in there. That looks. Uh, professional it's a nice clean install uh, go with 5 eighths you'll uh, be relatively safe and you can install this uh, with minimum uh, minimum amount of hassle uh, I'm going through this is the first time I've ever built one like this so I'm kind of uh, just feeling my way through it but we're ready for the next step in one of my uh, earlier videos uh, about charging. I had RCA charging and uh, RCA charging uh, jack that is and uh, one of our commenter watchers said hey why don't you use an SAE connector and I'm like okay well uh, why not let's use an SAE connector on this and this connector basically has 10 inches from here to here so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use a very high-tech tool the scissors may be cut off about an inch, like right there. There you go. I cut it off. What we're going to do is, we're going to mount it right here on the back left. And uh, obviously you can see my little tape here. I kind of, uh, the screws will go here and here. And this is the part I'm going to cut out. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to drill four little holes here here, here, and here, and then I'm going to connect those, actually run a, an X-Acto blade all the way through those little holes from here to here, and I'm going to mount that on there uh, using the same kind of uh, a 30 seconds uh, by 3 quarter inch screws because that's what I got. So that's what I'm going to do, okay? 
Okay, so here's how we're looking here on the back end. I cut the square out. Uh, you see this? That's the battery in there, like right here. This is actually the battery. Um, you could probably push that in a, just a little bit like that. But uh, this is going to install this way, like that. We're going to just drop that right in. On the other side, I just shaved a little bit of that off with the Dremel. You won't be able to tell looking at it at the top at the bottom but uh, just a little bit give it a little clearance so that actually when I do install it it's gonna it's gonna look good and it's gonna be right flush uh, right next to the battery and if you can see in there uh, let's see if there's any wires there we go uh, that's what it's gonna look like so it's gonna come in right next to the battery um, it looks uh, it looks pretty sharp, but uh, if you're uncomfortable with uh, getting uh, getting this in there like that, your other option would be to you know uh, take your piece of tape and uh, mark it, and you're going to install it going from top down, uh, right next to this, right in here in this area, and you won't have uh, anything to worry about. You can just install it right next there. It's just fine. It'll look good, but. Uh, I decided to put it on the back there because I just wanted to keep with the uh, the symmetry of the uh, the two charging uh, bays on top, and then uh, with the uh, light on the bottom, I just wanted to keep that even. But you know, seeing that I do have like a big number six on there, that would probably look okay too. So uh, we're ready for uh, the next step on this box. Okay, I uh, ended up having to take the. Uh, the plugs out and the battery out in order to get to the screw under here it's virtually impossible although one way you can do it is you could use like a half inch screw and get it in there and then uh, you know just put the uh, put the nut on the outside of this and uh, it'll actually work you just mount it on the reverse like that and then this will still work so it'll, your, your outside will look like that and that will still you know, close, but you know, I took it out and I'm just going to install this real quick and get the battery back in there and we can move on. So here it is mounted, came out really nice. I ended up using the smaller half inch uh, screws and the uh, 8 30 seconds uh, lock nut. On the inside, I'll show you what that looks like, but if you pop this open, kind of looks like that, looks pretty cool. I like the cover on it. Um, if you pop it open, uh, what I ended up doing is running the black wire underneath these two and then the red wire, um, the positive on top, but uh, that's how it looks. So, uh, we're getting there. We're getting there. So here's the top of our box. Uh, it measures 7 inches from here to here. Uh, at 3.5 inches, I drew a line down the center and then I cut a piece uh, which is actually four inches of uh, that same angle iron that we used to uh, to put down in the, the battery here to keep the battery from moving around uh, and drilled a couple of holes in there equidistant from this mark this is also the center mark we're going to line that up I'm going to drill a couple holes and uh, put some screws through there and in addition to that I'm going to start adding some of these uh, 3 8 inch uh, 10 millimeter uh, wire clamps uh, so we can do a better job of managing our uh, our wiring uh, throughout this thing so I'm going to install a couple of those and I'll show you what that looks like and where I put them and then the very last thing we're going to do in this video is install our four gang fuse block and as you can see there's no fuses uh, in here yet but I'll pop that open fuses go right here but uh, I figured out a good place to mount this thing. Our positive from the battery will go here, and then our leads from our switches will go here, and our uh, blade fuses will go right in here. And uh, that'll be it. After that, we're, uh, we've got all our main components in, and we'll be ready to wire this up finally and get this project done. Okay, so here's the uh, final install of that battery tie-down uh, along with these uh, 3 8 inch clamps that have been installed so we can run some wiring through there to manage our wires and 
that's what it looks like on the outside. I've installed those beveled uh, washers that were basically plumbing washers. Uh, these are brass uh, brass washers on top of that and the uh, uh, the screws. So that's what it looks like right now. Okay, so here's the inside of the box and here's our four gang terminal fuse block. Our main power lead from the battery will uh, attach to here. As you can see, that will only be a couple of inches. Uh, I've installed some uh, 5 amp fuses. I'll take them out for the actual install, but I just want you guys to see what it's going to look like. A uh, number of things I uh, thought about uh, doing uh, before uh, I decided on the final uh, placement of this fuse block. And one was uh, removing this and installing the fuse block in this way um, that probably would have worked but I would have had to you know cut some of this out here and that would have limited our area uh, as far as you know what we could add on top the other thing is uh, if you look at these screws they would have gone right through the logo uh, to serve as an attachment point the next idea I had was to use a piece of wood or bamboo and install it in here and then install a fuse block on top of that and that would have worked out fine because I would have had a screw here and a screw here on either side the only problem is uh, with the fuses uh, the lid won't close so we are going to install the fuse block right here right in there like that and we're going to put a cover on it like that and uh, once this is uh, all in and we have our wires in there, this isn't going to move. Um, I think this is the best spot for it uh, overall. And in terms of um, the top here, um, this still leaves this area open for another accessory, either surface mounted or, um, or something that uh, will recede inside there. We could add a number of things. Maybe this might be a good spot for some uh, Anderson connectors uh, uh, for you radio fans out there. But uh, that's where it's going to go. And uh, the next video, we're actually going to finally wire this thing up and, uh, and get it to work. But uh, we have all the components in place. Thanks for watching.